Missoula, 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 Missoula. It's a weird little town, weirdest town around. It's Missoula, 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 USA. Well, Austin. I'm Mike Steinberg. I'm the executive director of the Roxy Theater. The Roxy Theater is in Missoula, Montana. It's a nice little town in the interior west, right here in the Rocky Mountains. Population of about 60,000 people. That's including the students, and there's about 20,000 students. The Roxy is in a neighborhood next to the university, known as the Hip Strip. We're separated from downtown by a bridge, and it's a really great neighborhood. A lot of young people, a lot of activity, the independent record store is here, the skate shop, coffee shops, bakeries, and the Roxy Theater. The Roxy Theater was built in 1937 as a single screen theater. It was a second run theater from the beginning. There were several theaters downtown in Missoula. There was at least four screens which ran first run, including the Wilma Theater, which was this very grand thousand seat opera house. Really early on in the history of the theater, the Wilma Theater purchased the Roxy, so it became its own second run, so they could send movies across the river after uh, they played out downtown. But the Roxy remained. It remained one big single screen theater, but they couldn't compete with the multiplexes. So the Roxy just sort of filled a niche for cheap movies, became notorious for, you know, the sticky floors and the balcony area where you could sneak in beers. It remained that throughout the 1980s and 90s. In 1994, the Roxy Theater burned to the ground. Fire was so hot that it blew the doors across Higgins Avenue. The original facade remained, and the Roxy sat sort of dormant for a few years um, while there was a fight over the land. In 2001, the International Wildlife Film Festival purchased the building as the home for their festival. Keep the calls coming, folks. It is with your help that we make Montana Public Radio happen. Hey, I want to send a song out. I know in the middle of all this, but some of my friends are in the middle of something else. It's mm. all those crazy kids at the Wildlife Film Fest. Hey. Oh, hey my goodness. This song's going for you. This is Cool in the Gang, Jungle Boogie on Montana <laughs> Public Radio. Get down. Wild Walk is how we kick off IWFF. It is a parade in Missoula, and we get a couple hundred people every year who participate, mostly kids, dress up as their favorite animal, and we parade down Higgins, just celebrating our love of wildlife. The festival has its own character, and it's very much motley, colorful. It does, it's not polished, it's, it's community-driven. Missoula is definitely a, a hippie hideaway in Montana. It's a progressive place for sure. It's a place where if you're from Montana and you feel maybe a little out of, out of place in your own hometown, you might end up in Missoula because um, people are really open here and crazy and you'll see those bumper stickers keep Missoula weird and uh, that's for a reason. A bear biologist named Chuck Jonkel started the festival and for the first 10-15 years it was on the University of Montana campus. It was student run and they have been here at the Roxy for 15 years. For the first couple years it was just the festival that was here at the theater. In 2013 the festival was without an executive director so they hired this Jewish guy who's afraid of animals to be the executive director of the... I'm not really afraid of animals but you know. Raccoons, however. Shortly after the festival, I proposed to the board that we start to utilize the theater as a year-round venue, show documentaries and foreign films and independent films and play films that don't have a venue in town and we're gonna bring people in. And really quickly, we started to show box office. The Shorts Block is sold out. If you are holding tickets, you can get in or if you have will call, we can check your tickets. When Mike Steinberg took over, this place became a real art house cinema. The Roxy is really an anchor for the community. They've invested so much in the building, in their programming. I think they take chances, and I think they have a sense of humor, which is something uh, I appreciate. All day, every day, three theaters. Last Thursday, I think I was here for about five hours, and I went and saw a movie in every theater. We do about 20 engagements of rep titles a month. Not just classic 
repertory, but I kind of consider any one-off programming that we're doing a rep program. And that could be a brand new documentary or any of the special monthly series that we've developed. We have Indigenous Cinema, which are Native American films. We have a monthly series with a radio station, Trail Movie Night, so it's a music movie. We have a program called Essential Cinema. The greatest films that if you haven't seen it, don't be embarrassed, you can say you've seen it and just come see it again. We also have a program called Deep Cuts, which we started just a few months ago. It's really a kind of undefined territory of weirdness. We have another program for five years or so. It's a monthly series. So it might be a great director like John Carpenter. But we hit kind of gold once when we did a, a series called Murray Me. It was just four Bill Murray movies that everybody wanted to see. So we're like, oh yeah, well, let's just show the best films of a certain actor. So the name of the series we're doing for Ryan Gosling is called Hey Girl, the romantic films of Ryan T. Gosling. The success of the series like that is always dependent on whether or not you can kind of make sense of it to an audience. And that's so easy. I mean, everybody loves Ryan Gosling and he's adorable. And to kind of make a party of it, we have a photo booth, kind of like, maybe it's a kissing booth for people to come and celebrate their love for Ryan Gosling. Eventizing the programming makes it work. It's basically the experience of a, a curated event. We work with the Roxy in a number of ways. We're patrons of the Roxy and they're patrons of the coffee shop. They host a lot of film festivals and do after parties at Clyde and have just gotten to know them over the years. And they came to us with the idea of sponsoring the foreign film series. And I was very, very excited to be able to do that, uh, in part because I love film, but also because I have such fond memories of sort of my first art house or independent movie experiences. I grew up in a small rural town here in Montana and hadn't seen any independent or foreign films. And when I first moved here in the late 80s, uh, there was an art house theater that subsequently has closed. And seeing those films just like open doors and just blew the doors right off for me. And I really wanted to be able to be in a position uh, to give other people the opportunity to see those films. And especially on the large screen, I think we all like watching movies at home, but I think there's no substitute for coming to a theater and having that entire experience. Mike and his team foster the arts community sort of beyond the film world in a way that a small university town really needs. They utilize the space for other performance purposes. Just this week I saw a concert here and it was insane. It was like walking in to magic. And those are the kinds of shows that wouldn't be possible if Mike and his team didn't open up this theater to groups of all kinds. Time machines are made for me. I believe impossibilities are what you perceive. The Roxy Theater is a home for artists and the kind of edgy theater community specifically that I can speak to because there just isn't another place for it. The Roxy has given Between the Lines a home and space to create. I kind of think of this place as my living room. Um, I feel like I'm here at least once, if not two or three times a week for a play or some sort of uh, performance, whether I'm performing or someone else is performing, and any film that I can get enough time to come see. <laughs> I lived in Montana in the 70s and I used to come to the Roxy. What happened was I moved away for 30 years and then when I came back, I was just amazed to see that it had evolved into this amazing community theater. It's really a focal point for my life. I've celebrated my last three birthdays here with special movies and live performances and 
I mean, there are so many different things that are happening here. I can't imagine that they're not gonna have to like buy the building next door and open up a few more screens. The reality is that there's still a lot of people who wanna go out to the movies together and that that experience is carrying on. There's a community of people who are signing a contract together that says, we'll sit here in the dark and we'll experience this thing on the screen together. We won't talk, we won't text, we won't order a cheeseburger. You know, we'll just be here and experience what is presented to us. And it's a great thing about being human is that you can do that. And it's not really unlike being in a cave and watching the shadows on the wall and somebody who was doing it and saying, here's what happened. And the, you know, the woolly mammoth chased us off a cliff. I hope that never happened to anybody. Anybody else holding tickets? 